Chapter 19 And Saul spake to Jonathan his son, and to all his servants, that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. Now therefore I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where thou art, and I will commune with my father of thee, and what I see, that I will tell thee. And Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul his father, and said unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant against David, because he hath not sinned against thee, and because his works have been to thee word very good. For he did put his life in his hand, and slew the Philistine, and the Lord wrought a great salvation for all Israel. Thou sawest it, and didst rejoice. Wherefore then wilt thou sin against innocent blood to slay David without a cause? And Saul hearkened unto the voice of Jonathan, and Saul sware, As the Lord liveth, he shall not be slain. And Jonathan called David, and Jonathan shewed him all these things. And Jonathan brought David to Saul, and he was in his presence as in times past. And there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines, and slew them with a great slaughter, and they fled from him. And the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul, as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand. And David played with his hand. And Saul sought to smite David even to the wall with the javelin, but he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he smote the javelin into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. And Michael, David's wife, told him, saying, If thou save not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. So Michael let David down through a window, and he went and fled and escaped. And Michael took an image and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster and covered it with a cloth. And when Saul sent messengers to take David, she said, He is sick. And Saul sent the messengers again to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the bed, that I may slay him. And when the messengers were come in, behold, there was an image in the bed with a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster. And Saul said unto Michael, Why hast thou deceived me so, and sent away mine enemy, that he has escaped? And Michael answered Saul, she, He said unto me, Let me go, why should I kill thee? So David fled and escaped, and came to Samuel, to Ramah, and told him all that Saul had done to him, and he and Samuel went and dwelt in Naioth. And it was told Saul, saying, Behold, David is at Naioth in Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to take David, and when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying, and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the Spirit of God was upon the messengers of Saul, and they also prophesied. And when it was told Saul, he sent other messengers, and they prophesied likewise. And Saul sent messengers again the third time, and they prophesied also. Then went he also to Ramah, and came to a great well that is in Siku. And he asked and said, Where are Samuel and David? And one said, Behold, they be at Naioth in Ramah. And he went thither to Naioth in Ramah, and the Spirit of God was upon him also. And he went on and prophesied until he came to Naioth in Ramah. And he stripped off his clothes also and prophesied before Samuel in like manner, and lay down naked all that day and all that night. Wherefore they say, Is Saul also among the prophets? We see here one of the truly noble characters in the Bible who is not a prophet, and that is Jonathan, Saul's son. Now, if Jonathan was anything like his father in terms of his attitudes, if he was anything like a lot of people in attitudes, he could have been very jealous of David. Now, usually, the oldest son, in this case, Jonathan, would have inherited the kingship from Saul. But Jonathan didn't have a jealous bone in his body. He loved David as though David was his own soul, and he wanted to save his life, and he spoke kindly to his father, Saul, about David, and got David reinstated as the harp player and uh, to stand before Saul, which basically means that he would do whatever Saul needed done, in terms of maybe leading troops or playing the harp or doing whatever needed to be done. But the evil spirit that Saul seemed so afflicted by, which was not from God, I really want to emphasize that evil spirits do not come from God, seems to have overwhelmed, influenced, caused Saul 
to try to kill David again. And David goes to his home. Michael lets him down, so he manages to escape. And Saul is angry with his daughter because he cannot kill David. And we recognize that David has done absolutely nothing to Saul, has not endangered Saul in any way, shape, or form, not tried to take the kingdom. Obviously, David knows he was anointed. But he hasn't done anything to try and capitalize on it. Jonathan is perfectly innocent, trying to save David's life. Michael is perfectly innocent, David's wife, trying to save his life. And now you have a very jealous, angry father to both Michael and Jonathan, whose only goal is to find David to kill him. And this shows you the problems that David had to deal with. And yet, despite all of that, he still sustained Saul as the king, waiting time for the Lord to let David know whether or not he was going to be king early part or maybe the last couple of weeks or days in his life or something. But he wasn't about to take that the uh, opportunity to try and make it happen. He was going to let the Lord decide under what circumstance it was going to happen. We know from First Kings and others that prophets Samuel, Elijah, Elisha um, had groups of people that they taught by singing praises, praying, living righteously, uh, that these people could enjoy the gifts of the Spirit, and they were called either the sons of the prophets or the company of the prophets. And that is what was happening when David went to Samuel, and Saul, learning that David had gone to, to be with Samuel, sent men to capture David and bring David back to Saul so that Saul could kill him. And these individuals that Saul had sent were so impressed with this company of the prophets and the spirit that was there and the singing praises and the hymns and all the rest of this, that they started, they wanted that. They, they recognized the difference between what was really great about that and what was terrible about being around Saul. So Saul sent a second group of people and the same thing happened and finally Saul showed up himself. And he was impressed with it. And it says he took off his clothes. What that means, it doesn't mean he took off all of his clothes. It means, it, and we don't know exactly how he was dressed, but if he showed up uh, in his royal robes, that he would have taken them off. Or if he showed up with his military wear, and his armor and stuff, he would have taken that off. And so what he would have had left on was his tunic, which would have covered him from his neck down to his knee, at least. And then that would have been considered to be naked because he would have not had on the clothing that identified him by his rank. And if you didn't have something to identify you as your rank, you were considered naked unless you didn't have any rank, in which case you were a poor farmer and nobody cared. But we see that even Saul could be influenced for the good. And because of that influence, David's life was spared. Important thing to understand.